my name is Stacy Jensen and I'm one of the park rangers here at Sesquicentennial State Park and we're going to go over all of the materials you need and give you instructions for each of the activities um, that go along with our Discover Carolina Naturally Sensational program for kindergartners. So we have everything kind of laid out here on the table and we're going to kind of go activity by activity and show you what supplies you'll need to get ahead of time um, to complete the program. So you can do any of these activities as standalone, or you can put them all together or pick and choose which ones you wanna do. Either way, it's fine. Um, so the first activity um, is practicing using descriptive words. So basically you're gonna collect a few objects. So we collected, we have a pine cone, a stick, and some bark. And what you're gonna do is if you've got a class of students, you can get them in a circle and pass each item around and each student has to use a word to describe the item and they cannot repeat. So if somebody says this is pokey or prickly and the next person touches it and says that, they have to think of a different descriptive word. So it's small or it's brown or um, it's kind of round, kind of like an egg shape. Um, so they can describe it by the color, the shape, the size, uh, what it feels like in their hand. They can even smell it and say it smells like a pine cone. <laughs> Or nature um, and so that's one of the first activities you can get, can do to kind of get them thinking about um, using all five of their senses to look at objects and think of ways to describe them um, so like if we if we pass the stick around somebody might say well it's long um, or it's dead or it's wood um, or it's kind of rough um, or there's pieces falling off of it um, so there's all kinds of some one of them might think it's a wand um, so, and the same thing with the bark, you know, maybe it's smooth or maybe they think it's rough or it's small. Um, and again, just the color, the shape, the size, all those different characteristics. Um, so that's one of the activities. And if you can pick natural objects um, that they find outdoors, even if you let the kids go out and select them, that's fine. If you're doing this uh, with your child and not in a classroom setting, um, but more as a parent teacher, um, gather a bunch of items and just have them think of how many words they can think of to describe each item. So if you pick a pine cone, have them think of as many things as they can, then the stick, then the bark. Uh, but if you can do natural items, that would probably be, uh, be ideal. All right, so that's one of the first activities. Um, and then the second one is really simple. I didn't even bring supplies for this one, but it's called Be an Artist. And basically you wanna come up with if you're doing a whole class, you could pick just three things, or if you've got one child, uh, we've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five different examples of things that they can draw. So all you need is paper and crayons or colored pencils or markers, and um, they can draw something that feels soft, um, something that smells yummy, um, something that tastes sweet. So it's not, it's a little different than telling them, draw a picture of a dog or draw a picture of a tree you're trying to get them to incorporate their senses um, into their drawing. So it's a little bit more abstract. So they have to think of something that smells yummy. So they're thinking about their sense of smell and then drawing a picture of that. Um, so that's another really fun activity they can do. Um, then we have our activities that go along with the video um, that we did of the, um, the program itself out here at the park. So uh, one of the first things I have we do a magic smelling potion. And so I have it in this colored bottle that sprays uh, because it works really well with a group and you can't quite tell that it's water in there because it's blue. So they might think, that, a lot of times they think it's um, glass cleaner, but um, you can disguise it. But you do not have to have a spray bottle and you don't have to use a colored bottle. You just wanna have some kind of container with a liquid in it. Um, and you could, I mean, this could be decorated since it's magic smelling potion, you know, you could really go all out with it. Um, but this is just kind of what I use. And then, and you're just going to put water in that. That's all that is. And then, uh, in also in that activity, uh, we have a secret smell. Um, and so I use these old film canisters because I have them. Um, but you can use anything. You can use recycled jars. You could even use a little paper cup or a plastic cup. It doesn't matter. Um, but you wanna have something that's kind of strong smelling. So I take cotton balls and these I have uh, dipped in peppermint extract, but you could use orange, um, you could use essential oils, but try and kind of pick something that 
isn't going to be completely foreign to them. So when they smell it, it'll be something that's familiar that they recognize. Um, and then you just stick the cotton ball in there and have them smell it. Um, and it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't have to be a container with a lid. That's just the way these are. Um, but just something that has something with a smell on it. And I mean, you could do cinnamon. Um, so that's the um, smelling activity. And then we have, um, when we do our nature walk and we use the rainbow chips. So what I use when I do the program here are the little paint samples from Lowe's, Home Depot, any kind of um, hardware store. And I just cut them up and uh, I use them with multiple classes. Um, but if you don't wanna go to the store and get those, you don't have to. Um, we have, well, for one thing, um, let me add that we have the materials list online and it looks like this and you'll just be able to print that, uh, print that off so you know exactly what materials you need. Um, but we also made a rainbow chip sheet. So if you're working with a class of students and you don't want to go out and get the paint samples, you can print this out and just cut up the little squares um, to look like that and give each student a square. If you are a parent at home with a child, give them this whole sheet, why not? And let them walk along and see if they can, you know, do a check mark on each color that they find. Um, so this is downloadable and available as well on our website, um, discovercarolina.com. And then, so that's the rainbow chip supplies. Um, and then one thing that I do in the program, and, and this is in the video, so you wouldn't necessarily need to recreate these, but you could. I have printed pictures um, of some common wildlife found on the park. Um, they're going to see this in the video, but if you want to do some of this at home too, um, or maybe you have different animals that you want to cover, or maybe you've got something else that lives where you are, um, you can do different pictures. I just use these because a lot of times with the younger students, they may not know what a fox is, or they may not be able to tell a raccoon from a possum. Um, they're not always familiar with uh, native wildlife. Um, and so, and this also gets them brainstorming um, for our next activity when we have our, um, our whiskers on. So this is in the video, but if you wanna print your own, you can do that as well. Um, and then for the whiskers and antenna activity, the feeling activity, this is what we use. And the reason we use these chenille sticks, as they're called, uh, previously known as pipe cleaners, um, is because they're easy and you can use them with a bunch of different classes. Um, because basically what we're doing is we're, we're holding them up like whiskers or we're holding them up like antenna. Um, but if you're at home and you're doing this with your child, something really cool you could do is actually, you know, take like a headband and make antenna. Um, take these and those little styrofoam balls and you could put glitter on them or whatever and actually make antenna. Um, or you could somehow construct, I'm not exactly sure how you do it, but make some kind of whiskers that they could wear. Um, we just use these because we use them over and over again and because we're out on the trail. But if you're at home, make a fun activity out of that and make whiskers or antenna or both, even better. Um, because at that age, sometimes they don't think about what animals have whiskers and they're not always familiar with um, the fact that insects have antenna or that that's what they're called. Um, so that would be a good learning activity and an extension too um, on what they're learning to know, you know, this is where the antenna go and this is where the, um, the whiskers go. So don't feel like you can only use pipe cleaners. That's just what works best here. Um, and if you're in a classroom, if you're a teacher in a classroom, same thing. If you can come up with a creative way, something they could take home. So if they get to make their own whiskers or antenna and take them home, um, that would be awesome. So that is for all the activities that we do um, in the videoed uh, portion of the program. And then we have two more activities at the end. Um, and the first one, I think I have it here. Uh, maybe I don't. Oh, okay. So. Um, you have to catch smells. All right, so again, I'm using the um, film canisters. You don't have to use those. You don't even have to have a lid on it. Um, any kind of container or little paper cups or little plastic cups are fine too, jars, whatever you've got sitting around. Um, but either send your students out as a group if you, if you have an outdoor space that you can do this or your child if you're at home teaching, um, send them out to collect some different smells so they're catching smells. And ideally, they're nature smells. So in this one, we have soil, we have dirt. And in this one, we have, um, oh, moss. 
Um, and then we have, and these are just a few we collected. We have grass and we have pine needles. Um, and so you're just going to catch as many as you can and then um, have them smell them and try and guess what they are. Um, and just think about how each one smells differently. And then you can also go out and um, try and find, you know, where they came from and talk about, um, you know, the different smells and, and where they were found out, outdoors. Um, and then the last activity is the um, eye and ear helpers. And if you've never made these before, they're super easy. Um, you can take a paper towel roll and cut it in half or you can use toilet paper rolls. Um, but basically you just need two of these and then you're gonna take a hole punch or and if you don't have a hole punch, just you know cut it out with the scissors or whatever. And then any kind of string, doesn't have to be yarn. Um, and then if you've got time, let the kids decorate them because these aren't decorated so they're really boring. Um, but they can put colors on them, construction paper, glue, glitter, stickers, whatever, um, color them with markers, but just tape them together. But I, I think the key is having um, this part on them because that way, if the kids are out walking around, they don't have to carry them. You just put them on and then basically take them outside and let them take a closer look at things. So they're gonna look through, the, they're like little um, homemade binoculars. And it what it does is it allows them to focus more on one thing. Um, it kind of narrows their focus on a certain area and hopefully they'll observe more and see more um, when they're looking through these and these are fun I mean you could take these on any nature walk um, but it's definitely great for this activity using your sense of sight and kind of seeing how you know real binoculars can be kind of tricky for kids but these they feel like binoculars to them but they're super easy to see through there's no focusing or adjustments that need to be made obviously um, so this is a really fun activity too uh, so I hope that makes sense. Again, we've got the material list online um, and you'll just, you want to have all this stuff ready to go other than um, the things, the items that you'll let your child or um, students collect. Um, and then this is all you need to, to do all the activities.